Hey folks, uh, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. Um, Gardens of Ceres, finally doing this sucker live. Um, I originally wanted to do this yesterday, but it's going to happen today. Uh, so this is your chance to watch Gardens of Ceres get played, but also chat with me. Um, invited the backers from our Kickstarter in, um, and we'll get started here in just a few minutes. In the meantime, um, just as a reminder, if you are one of our backers and you have any questions, this is also your chance to have a dialogue. I mean, I know we've been talking in the in the comment section and things, and as I said in the videos before, um, we're, we're really distraught, <laughs> for lack of a better term, about the delays. Um, but uh, it's going to be a beautiful game. I can't wait. I know they're sending us the, the few copies for Gen Con, so you can come and see them at Gen Con. I'll have them in Origins. Um, and then, as I said, in the week in between the two, um, or maybe earlier, if I get them ahead, it's going to be razor thin getting them over here. Just even, even air shipping a few copies out of China has proved to be difficult right now. Um, hi, Toxic Rat. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll get started here in just a few seconds. Um, I've got the game loaded up in TTS. I haven't even done the setup, so those who haven't seen the TTS will actually get to see how the, the scripting works for the setup, but I'll, I'll kind of explain it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to TTS now. All right, and I will get going. All right, so this is Gardens of Ceres. Of course, this is just the solo mode, Gardens of Ceres, um, where we're going to be playing against Ceres, who isn't happy about the whole... Oh, hey, sweet. Uh, so you're the one that's actually... Uh, so Toxic Rat is the one who's going to be running an event at Gen Con um, where you actually get to play uh, Foundations of Rome there. And then, of course, during, when it's not the event, we'll have them at the booth and maybe I'll have some tables where they'll be set up as well. Um, good to see you, sir. Um, so Ceres is not happy about the fact that we are encroaching on the wilderness. And so she's instructed her followers to... Well, mess with us. And she's going to mess with me today for sure. Um, I actually played this last night just because, you know, I, sometimes, you know, you want to do a quick run through. Um, and I just barely beat her. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go ahead and do the setup. So first, I'm going to choose player. Um, as everyone knows me, I always love to choose. It um, uh, looks like someone's having trouble in the Discord. Hold on one second. Apologies. Wrong link. <laughs> uh, apparently, I put twitch.yv. That's not a thing. Um, all right. So as anyone knows, I always choose blue. So I'm going to choose blue. Now, in this script, I have it set so when you choose a color, she's going to choose a specific color. Uh, of course, in the real game, you choose whatever color you want for. Um, I believe for blue, it's going to choose red. So let's go ahead and choose blue. That's going to do that setup. Of course, since I picked a color, it's going to mess with my nice, pretty setup that I had done prior. All right, so we selected a color. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit confirm. We are not going to use monuments. Of course, you can use monuments with Ceres, um, but I'm going to choose not to for the purposes of this stream. It just makes it a little easier for me because I'm also going to be watching the chat. So we're going to select no for that. And now we're going to hit set up game. And this is going to do the setup. It's going to go ahead. It's going to take care of the deed deck. It's going to send me my starting deeds. It's going to put out my pieces. It's going to get Sari starting cards. And it's going to put out her starting pieces as well. So let's go ahead and hit set up. And wait. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of this scripting. I'm not going to lie. So when I first started scripting the, the TTS for... Um, Foundations of Rome, I had never done a TTS mod before, ever. So I was actually really excited when as I started digging in, uh, digging in, I was actually really excited to find out that it was Lua scripting, which I did have some um, experience with. 
All right, so we are all set up. Ceres has placed out her starting. If we look out here, we're gonna see she started with two civic buildings and a population. So I'm gonna go ahead and move her up one on the population track, and I'm gonna get started. So for the player, everything's the exact same as the base game. You're just playing Foundations of Rome as if you were playing it with other people. Once we get to Ceres' turn, I'll explain how she works. All right, so. Uh, first thing, I'm going to just take a minute here to figure out what I want to do. I do like that I got some pieces together, but I also want to worry about keeping Ceres away from creating um, squares of things because she'll get a lot of extra points that way. All right, so let's see. G4, not really worried about. G2 is fine. C5, I, I'm going to actually purchase. I'm going to start out by purchasing C5 for four coins. And I'm going to go ahead and put my marker there. And we will move the cards. All right, so as I said, same as a normal turn for a regular player. Now what Ceres is going to do is we're going to draw the top card off of her deck. We're going to flip it over and we're going to take a look at it. It's going to give us a number. That number is going to tell us which of the cards in her current four of her tableau that she's going to play. So this means she's going to play the third card. So we're going to move that here. And then these will slide over. We'll put this card here, and we're going to see what she's going to do. Now, this is terrible if she does this right at the start, kind of. In large part, means she's going to go out there to lots she owns, and she's going to build on them. Well, currently, she doesn't own any lots that she hasn't built on, so instead, she's going to get a point for each of the times she can't do it. In this case, that's going to be three times. All right, so she's going to start out by getting three points. I can live with it. So for those using the TTS mod, when to slide it, it'll tell you how to do it by clicking this. But if you hold the card with, with the left mouse button and then hit the right mouse button, you can slide the card right under the deck. So in the real game, you just put it at the bottom of the deck. Hey, Pink and Manti, super looking forward to this game. Can't wait. I'll be breaking it in. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, I, I'm dying to have this in your hands. Mostly because I'm dying to see people playing it and having it on their tables. Um, all right, so that's Sari's turn. She's done what she's going to do. Wasn't too bad for us. I can live with it. Uh, so now it's back to me, and I am going to start by putting some money. Since she's got this civic building with uh, that gets based on population, this is a good place for me to start putting in some commercial to kind of stem that off. So I'm going to put in a nice pottery studio right there, and we're going to go back to Sari's. So we're going to draw her top card. It's going to be number two. So we're going to pull this, slide these over. And that means she's going to bribe. Now bribe, what she's going to do is she's going to do one silver plus every silver she has out on the board. She's going to bribe the deeds for sale. So in this case, she currently has no money out on the board. So she's just going to place one silver and that's going to start right here. So now G4 would cost three coins. All right, so we'll flip over that card. We'll slide it under the deck and we'll move back to me. Uh, let's see, G2, I think we already said G2, I didn't care for, D7. All right, I should probably do some more building. So I'm gonna build a Domus Maxima right here. And I apologize if during the stream I make any errors. Um, a lot of times when I'm streaming and I'm playing a game, sometimes I forget where I'm at because I also wanna check the, the chat as well. All right, so that's going to move me up to two on the population, and we're going to move back now to Ceres. So again, this moves really quick. This is basically a two-player game with Ceres doing what she's going to do. So I'm going to flip over. She's going to do card number two. So we're going to move that over, and she's going to take the cheapest. Now, if there's a tie like there is here, because this one is worth three, this is worth three right now, she'll just take the one to the left. So that means she's going to claim G4. So we're going to put out one of her markers right here. We're going to remove the coin. We're going to slide these cards over and we're going to pull out another card. Simple enough. Take that card, flip it in under. All right, back to me. I think it's time to get some money. So if you haven't played the base game, taking money income means I'm going to get five coins plus the coins from my commercial buildings. So I'm going to get five plus one for my pottery studio. And that's gonna be my turn. So we are back to Ceres. 
She's going to do number one. And this means she is going to enlarge. So she's going to enlarge three times. She only has the one right now. There are rules for how she enlarges. She first will enlarge anything that makes her current garden larger. Then she'll do anything that is furthest away from me. And then finally, she'll start picking things close to me. So in this case, she's going to enlarge this. So we're going to pull out a tile here. That's going to give her a coin. And then she has nothing else to do. So she's going to move up to victory points. All right, back to me. I do have some money at least. So that's promising. G2, let's see, D7, G6, F1. I'm going to buy F1. That's going to cost me six coins. Put that right there. All right, and back to series. Forgot to flip her card. All right, now she's going to do number four. Oh! Did I shuffle this? I did. I did. The, the mod auto shuffles it. And actually, it's not bad. So it's good and bad. So enlarge means she if she does it early. She's going to get a lot of points early on because she's got nothing to build on. However, that means she's going to build less later, which means she's, she's going to be less of a threat out on the board. So give or take. Goes either way. All right. So she's going to enlarge. That's just going to be three more points for her because she has nothing to enlarge. Last night's game went a lot different. She was just building all over. She actually ended up with about 70% of the board. All right, so back to me. Uh, I could use money, but I could use actually putting some money. So I'm going to build a little bakery up here, I think, on F1. Yeah, seems like a good idea. All right, let's flip over. She's going to do number four. So she's going to claim, so this one says claim D. So they'll either have a single letter or they'll have three letters. Um, because if she can't claim, so if we pulled this and there were no Ds, which there is, she would actually go into this deck right here. And instead, she would auto build on that. And she only has three in there, in which case, if she goes through those, she starts really hammering me. But in this case, she's going to claim D7. So we will put out her marker. And pull another card. All right, back to me. Now I'm going to build another bakery. I need a lot of money. Don't we all? All right, so let's take a look at what Ceres is going to do. She's going to do two. So you, you get the flow here. Like, we're just going to go like this, and we'll we'll get to scoring. But we're going to go like this, figure out what she can do. So she's going to buy F first if she can, then A, then D. In this case, she's going to buy F7. And she's going to place a marker out. Uh, David Teresi did an amazing job with this, I have to say. Um, when you all first asked for a solo mode, obviously solo mode wasn't part of the original Emerson design. Um, and everyone was like, want this to be solo. And we, we reached out to David Turtsy and I'm, I've just been so impressed with playing this. Uh, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, so, all right. So we've taken care of her and we are going to move back to me. Now I'm going to take money. So that means I'm going to get five plus three. So I'm going to get eight and we'll move back to Ceres. She's going to do two. This time she is going to do some enlarge. So she's going to enlarge a park three times. These are the two she's going to enlarge. So we'll start with this one. It's furthest away from me. That's going to move her up on the population track. And then we'll pull another. That's going to move her up on the population track again. Mm, it happens. She has taken up population. All right, flip that over, slide it back in the deck. Now I have some money to play with. So B2, G2, G6, C2. Let's buy C2. I 
I have a, I have an idea. We'll see if it works. All right, slide these over. And appreciate everyone who's stopping in. Um, again, feel free to ask in the chat. I, that's why you keep seeing me look this way. My chat's over here. Um, and then, of course, I'll, I'll put this video up available later um, for anybody who needs to leave or for the rest of the backers. All right, so let's check in on Ceres. Ceres is going to do number two. She is going to bribe. Now, so we check the board. She has one coin out, so one plus the one default. So she's going to two, so she's going to go one and two. And for the record, we are playing this on easy mode. Um, there are ways to scale this up using monuments. There, You'll see some series tiles as they come out that have two people or two coins in harder modes. Those count as two. We're playing them as one. So we are playing on the easiest mode. Uh, all right. So she bribed and it's back to me. So I'm going to try this. Actually, I'm going to wait. I'm going to take coins first to buy myself a little time. So first, I'm going to take coins. That's going to be another eight coins. And then I'm going to let Ceres go. And then I'm going to do what I was going to do. All right, so she's going to do number one. Ooh, help I didn't sling the cards around. She is going to buy G, so she's immediately going to buy G2. Gonna remove that coin and the rest of this will slide over. The coin does move with it. And that's gonna be the last card. So once we clear through this, we're gonna be moving into scoring. All right, now it's back to me. So now I am gonna do what I was gonna do. I'm gonna build this up here. Which is why I took the income first. So at least I benefited from the Pottery Studio, but now that's gonna move me up to six. I wanna stay, so one thing, you wanna stay just ahead of her if you can, because in the in the scoring rules for population, as you'll see, the if you're too far ahead, you're actually just giving points to the person behind you too. All right, so that's gonna be me. Let's move back to Ceres. She's gonna do number three. She's gonna bribe again. So again, that's just gonna be two. She's gonna drop another one here and one here. All right, back to me. So many choices now, actually. G6, B2, B2 is lucrative. I'm gonna buy B2 for four. Yeah, I'm gonna buy B2. Ready? So that gives me B2, paid my money, and we're back to series. Number four. All right, so she's gonna claim a C first. There's no C, there's no E, but there is an A, thankfully. So she's gonna take A7. All right. Do, do, do. All right, uh, br 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 let me move this mic. I just look at the levels. I might be a little low. If I'm a little low, let me let me know in the chat. I don't think I am. Like this mic should be picking up okay, but just in case. Uh, okay, that was Sari's turn. She claimed. All right, so it's back to me. Uh, I'm gonna buy B three for six. Hey, Panda, Amanda Panda, how's it going? We are playing Gardens of Ceres, the solo module for Foundations of Rome. Uh, what did I just do? I bought something. Yes, I bought that. Okay, so trying to keep cool. So I'm, tr I, I'm not keeping cool right now because... Um, so uh, this, the, the room, my office, which is also where I stream has no windows and no, and we don't have central air. So all the AC is in all the other rooms, but I close the door when I'm streaming. So I have no air. So anyway, just, uh, I'm sweating like crazy under here. <laughs> uh, 
what did I just do? Oh, it's Sari's turn. See? See, what'll happen is I'll pay attention. And you have long sleeve. Yeah, but see, I always have long sleeve shirts. That's just, that's me. All right, she's going to do a claim deed. She's going to buy most expensive, of which, again, this is four and this is four, so she's going to buy the one to the left. So she's actually going to buy G6, which I can live with. I just didn't want A2. So actually, her bribing messed her up, not me. All right, so G6 belongs to her. And now I can spend my last three coins to buy that A2. Thanks, Ceres. All right, and we move back to Ceres. This, this might be a good round for me. All right, she's gonna do number three. All right, so she's gonna claim D, then F, then B, so she's gonna claim F5, because there is an F out. And that's gonna be the last deed, so her turn, my turn, then she'll take her last turn, which on Ceres, no matter what's happening for her last turn of a round, she always just does an enlarge park action, no card flip. All right, so let's take care of her claim deed and then look at me. Uh, she's gonna do three, which means she could tie me if they're all population, but I'm, I kind of really wanted to put out this artisan foundry, but I think instead, I'm gonna, mm, no. Uh, I think I'm gonna put out a pottery studio up here instead. I, I, so population is the thing that she has the most in her thing. So there's a chance she could pull three populations. So I'm not gonna risk it. All right, so her last action is gonna be enlarge. This is the one that's going to, oh, hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Just here to troll and checks out, checks out. We're playing Gardens of Ceres, the solo mode for Foundations of Rome. All right, so she's gonna do this one first. Again, population. God, I kinda hope she, oh. I kind of hope she doesn't do it or she's going to make me f look stupid. All right, so that's one. And then she'll do this one. Nope. So that's money. And then she'll do this one. That's population. So close, but she didn't do it. She didn't catch me. All right. And then we will take this and plop it here to remind myself that I'm gonna be first player going into the next round, because those rules are still the same too. You always take the first turn of the game, but then it's normal rules, she still acts as a second player. So now we're gonna do scoring. So first we're gonna look at population. I have six, uh, six here, plus I get the round bonus, which is four, so I'm gonna get 10 points. Ceres is gonna get six, because she's gonna get the score that I currently have but she's not going to get the bonus so that's going to move her to 14 so that's going to be population scoring then we're going to do income now for income i'm going to get my scoring as normal i'm going to get three coins oh yeah three coins and i'm going to get two victory points for this pottery studio that's going to be it for me and then series is going to get one point per coin in this particular uh, round so she has one coin here and one point coin here so she's going to get two points and then we're going to do civic buildings i don't have any civic buildings out but she does so if we look at this little chart here it shows you really she's getting two per adjacent buildings whereas i score civics based on counts of things she scores based on just adjacents that um, match it now you'll notice this particular one here is for civic i didn't put any civics near this one's for pop, but there's nothing actually adjacent. And that's all of her civic buildings. So, you know, sorry about your luck, Ceres. All right, so that's going to end that round. So we're going to set up for the next round. We're going to pull out new cards. And as before, I have the first player marker. 
So we are going to get started with the next round. Um, she also would have scored if there were any grids. Can't wait for the table presence of the game. I'm sure it'll look amazing on the table. <sighs> you have no idea. And I haven't even got to see a production copy on the table. I won't until we get those copies of Gen Con. But obviously, you know, during the Kickstarter, I had those early prototype copies, and even that looked beautiful. Um, just for giggles, I actually did pull, because I still have one of them in the closet. I pulled it out, and I set it up when we got the sample of the mat. It was beautiful. <laughs> uh, all right, so me first. Uh, let's see. I have... She's catching me on pop, and her pop will never reduce, so I need to make sure that I'm keeping ahead. It's actually a cool thing about series versus other players. When you're playing against other players, their pop can go up and down if they're building over buildings, or they're just not. Where a series population is going to continuously grow throughout the entire game, and it is never going to reduce. So you are forced to make sure you compete with her, especially with those bonuses. All right, I got to buy things. I don't like this. I do, I think I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy e, E5 e right off the bat. I don't have much money, but I don't want Ceres to have that. All right, so that's going to be me. Ceres is going to do four. So she's going to bribe again. She has one, two coins out, plus the one, so she's going to drop three. Now, when she's dropping coins like this, she can drop a max of one coin per card um, while she's dropping. So if she, say, had six coins out there, that would be seven drops. She would only drop six, one on each card. Of course, she can drop more than one on a card later rounds, but initially when she's doing it uh, during the bribe action, it's one per card. All right, so that's that. I need money. Um, I also need population, but I need money. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna build this up here just so I can get a little bit more money next time. All right, so now we're back to Ceres. She's gonna do number one. So B first, which there is a B out, so she's gonna buy this card, which is B1, which really messes with my plan, Ceres. Not, uh, not excited about that. Makes me, it makes me sad on the inside and the outside. All right, back to me. Now I'm gonna take money. It's gonna be five plus four, so I'm gonna take nine coins. I'm gonna move this out of my way. And we'll move back to Ceres. So she's gonna do number one. So she's gonna claim an E first, so E6. Getting all up in my business is what she's doing. She built she she escalates quick at some points. All right, so let's flip her over, drop that in here. So you can see this is really like an easy flow. It's again, it's the thing I love about what David Turtsy and his team, and of course Emerson had input on this on the solo mode too. I just it's so clean. Like I was so nervous about it, and then I played it, and I was like. This is fun. I really feel like I'm playing against a person, um, but with some additional stuff, you know, like it's cool the way, so each of her gardens counts as a single tile, which actually gives me some unique scoring opportunities um, that normally you would only get if you're playing in a four or five player game, but because she's always doing these single tiles, you get things that you might only get in those higher player counts. Uh, I believe that was her turn, sure. Uh, let's see, D6 is not bad. Most looks I don't want her to get it. I'm hoping C6, there's always a chance it's over here. I'm gonna buy D6, it's gonna cost me three coins. All 
All right, so D6 is mine. I'm also trying to stem off any time that I see that she might end up getting a square or possible. Just don't even let her do it. All right, so Ceres is going to do number three. She's back to bribing. Why is she getting all this money for bribing? Again, that's going to be three. So this is what I was saying. She'd still put an additional there, but then one, two, three. Seriously. She just grow. <laughs> is she grow. Is she growing this money on trees? Because she does gardens. It's a bad joke. It's just, yeah. All right, back to me. <laughs> oh, let's see, E3. I kind of have to buy it. I'm going to buy E3 for four. She made it expensive, but I'm going to take it anyway. All right. Ah. <sighs> Did I did I actually put my marker on it? Because I feel like I did. Okay. I sometimes forget. All right, she's gonna do number one, which means she's gonna buy uh, A first, and there is an A, so she'll buy that. That's gonna be the last card out of the that. She's got plenty of room to grow, that's for sure. Do, do, do. And as a reminder, this this mod is available for anyone. It is published on TTS in the in the uh, workshop. Um, there, I put a link to it in the on the Kickstarter comments um, or in the update rather. So you can subscribe and you can play this yourself already. Um, and we're playing as blue, but as you saw at the beginning of the stream, you can pick any of the five player colors, and it will do all the setup for you, which is still my favorite bit. Uh, all right, so I think it's my turn. I think she did some. Oh, yeah, she just bought A4. All right, so let's see. This is good. I am one, two, three, four, five. I'm double checking that's correct. That is correct. So I want to put a population here but she's going to score based on population there. So I think I'm going to not. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out these singles. I think. Ooh, what I could do, though, I could put this here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's upgrade that one. That's going to move me up to eight. I just want I just want to stay just ahead of her. Yeah, that works. All right, back to Ceres. She is going to do number 4. Here comes the enlarge, which we knew was coming. She's basically got an entire launch of them. Uh so let's see. She's going to do this one first because it enlarges one of her parks. That is of course going to move her up on the population track. She will do this one first because it's not adjacent. Next, that one is scores on civics. And then finally, it's a split between these. This one is closer to her, so she'll do this one. And that's going to be more population. So many people! Where is she? Where is she finding all these people? I mean, she is a goddess. She's got plenty of worshipers. All right, so that's going to end her. Ooh. So sometimes if you slide too quick, it slides into the deck. Or literally crashes into the deck, not into the deck, crashes into it. All right, so back to me. Again, the population thing. She's just so mean to me. I really want A3, but I can't afford it. So I'm going to take money. So that's going to be nine coins. And I'm going to hope that she doesn't... No, she can't. She won't be able to take that because she's going to take cheapest. So I'm safe. So she's going to do number two. And she's going to take the cheapest. 
which is going to be this one. It's just going to take g7. I can live with that. that. That's a thing I can live with. All right, let's slide that in and back to me. What was it I wanted to buy? Oh yeah, a3. <laughs> so three coins, buy an a3, completing my little square, which makes me happy. All right, let's check in on Ceres. She's gonna do number two. No surprise there. She's gonna enlarge her parks. So she's going to do just the two she has. This is going to be the first choice because it enlarges her park. Then she's going to build over there, which is going to give her population again, because of course it is. And she's going to get a victory point for the excess build action that she could not use. All right. Now it's back to me, and I'm getting... I'm getting nervous because, like, if she tries to do this D, there is no D, so she's going to build out of here. It is what it is. All right. I don't really need to do money, but what I do need is this. So I'm going to keep ahead of her. I'm going to put in this grand insula right now. Boom. Big building. That's going to bring me to 14 population. So at least I got a breather now. Yep. All right. Back to Ceres. Ceres is going to do number four. So she's going to enlarge. She can enlarge. So she's just going to take her three points. Cry in the corner, I assume. I am still not happy with this situation, except now, ooh, wait, now I am. I'm gonna build a pottery studio. We earlier wanted it for population, but we didn't want it because she had that civic building. She don't have a, she, I have plenty of population now, so I'm good. All right, back to Ceres. Ceres is gonna do number three. So she's going to do an F, A, or D. There is an F there, so she's going to buy F4, which is here, which means I don't want her owning G5 for sure. But it's not available, so... All right. Back to me. I think I'm going to buy A6. So it's going to cost me two. I'm going to pop one there. Move back to Ceres. Thank you all for watching. I mean, I know we don't have a lot of people at the moment, but um, still nice. Um, hi to everyone. Toxic, of course. Uh, Tox is the one who's going to be running some Gen Con events, actually letting you play the copies of Foundations that we've got there. Um, Pink and Manly, Panda, Jeremy, Blast Bio, Hex Hexati. I'm going to pretend I pronounced that. I'm going to pretend it's Hexati. All right. Uh, what did I do? I'm going to I'm going to assume it's Siri's turn. Although it might be my turn. Anybody know what, whose turn it is? So this is what happens when I look at chat. I forget whose turn it is. I'm going to assume it's Siri's turn. And if it's not Siri's turn, then Siri's going to get an extra turn. I think it is, though. All right, so Ceres is going to do number two. She's going to buy. There is no D for her to buy, so this is where this deck comes into play. These are three cards we set aside at the beginning. Um, we're going to pull one of those cards, B5, and she's going to automatically build on it. Not get a lot. She's going to automatically build. So she's automatically going to put this here on B5. No! It's not what I wanted. Remember, I wanted B5. I wanted to put a be beautiful foundry there. I'm going to real quick do a quick check on her um, population. Make sure we got it right. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is correct. Remember, that's a civic building. 
I'm not I'm not happy about what happened. Now I kind of want to ruin her plans up here. Oof, could ruin her plans here. I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy e4. I don't really want it, but I don't want her to have it. Um really oh I got a good idea. Got a good idea for my last turn once we get moving here. All right, so let's pull Ceres. Ceres is going to do number three. That's going to be this card. She's going to do a GBE. There is no GBE. I got to end this round. Uh, so she's going to build straight on to G1. More population. Good news is she can't, oh, she can't do it. This one, as long as I leave F, that's an F, right? No, it's CEA. Mm, this, is, this is not good. This is, this is bad for me. Um, I'm still going to build the building. So right here, I'm going to put in this library because I'm going to take advantage of her population. And I'm going to get some points off of it. All right, let's pull her card. She's going to do number two. She's going to bribe. That's okay. I can live with it. There's only one spot for her to put a coin. We can live with that. Back to me. Is there anything? Uh, I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to put another civic building. I'm going to put a little library right here. Take advantage of my pop and her pop. And we'll pull her... She's going to do number four, right? Which was the best option. Number four. She's going to buy most expensive, which is only F2. I can live with it. F2. And then I'm going to get one turn, and then, of course, she's going to do an enlarge as her last action. So what would do the best benefit? What would I get the best bang for my buck here? Because mm. I could either build something, which really just be population at this point. One, two, three. She can't catch me on pop. So I'm not going to get anything out of that. It's not really going to... I could put a fountain in just to get something. Uh, it would be one, two. I, I am. I'm just going to put it in a little fountain. Got a bail. Thanks. Thanks for joining, Toxic. I'll see you at Gen Con, or we'll talk before either way. All right, so that's my last turn. Now she's going to put it in her... Two things. These are pretty much equal, so we'll say the top one first. That's going to be money. Second one's going to be pop. This is what I was talking about, about the, the tiles that have two. In harder mode, this would actually count as two population. Again, we're playing easy, so we will move her up on pop, and then, of course, she'll get an extra point for the build action that she cannot complete. And that's going to end that round. So we're two rounds through. Let's do scoring. So first, I'm going to count her population just to make sure that we're good. Uh, so she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, which we are correct. So we're doing excellent record keeping. I have 14 plus it's seven bonus for the round. So I'm going to get 21 points. And she's going to get my 14 points. So that's going to be 10, 35. By the way, I love scoreboards that do 10s across because it makes things so much easier. Um, a smartphone does the same thing. I, I just, all score trackers should just be 10 across, base 10, makes my life so much easier. All right, so that's going to be population scoring. Let's do commercial scoring. Uh, for me, I'm going to receive three coins, and I'm going to get two points. So that's going to put me there. I'm going to move me here just for the moment, because I know that she is going to get one, two, three, four. Move her to 39. And then we're going to do civic. For civic, 
I do have some civics that matter. So she has this. This scores on civic buildings only, as we showed. Um, she has this that's on civic buildings, nothing. This scores based on adjacent population, so nothing. This, so again, she's scoring nothing on her civic buildings. She, cry, she, she was beating me up on civic buildings last time. But me, on the other hand, I got three of them out. So we have the blue respendant. That is one per adjacent pop. There is one, two, three. So that's going to be three points for me. It's going to move me to 38. This is one per uh, adjacent building. Well, that's going to be one, two plus hers. That's going to be three more points for me. That's going to move me to 41. And this is one for every two population. There's a four here. So that's going to be two more points for me. The end of the third round, the blue pair player pulls ahead of Ceres. We'll see how long that lasts. All right, so let's set up for the next round. Um, I do believe that I went last, so Ceres is going to be going first this round. I should have put that there to remind myself, but that's fine. Apparently, I'm bad at flipping these cards. All right, and we are off for the third and final round. And then, of course, we'll go through final scoring, which only has a few tweaks. All right, so starting with Ceres, she is going to do number three first, which means she's going to buy a C, which there is a C, so she's going to buy C6. And then... Obviously, I have to buy things. I don't have any lot so g5 uh, i so this is where i have to decide i really do want i kind of want to buy g5 just a blocker from making a square because in scoring any two by two she has will get her two, uh four victory points three by threes is 18 and if she gets a four by four she gets 48 victory points so don't let her do it uh so g5 is good in that i should try to buy it um but i don't see any way for her to to do anything with it right now. She can't get to it. Um, so I'm not that worried if there's anything I'm worried. So if I look at, and this is where you kind of look at her upcoming cards. So I know she could buy a D, F, or B. So right now there's only a D out there. So I should see, is D3 something I really want? And the answer to that question is actually yes. So I'm gonna buy D3 for six coins because there's a chance she could buy it, and I really want to put in an artisan for him there. So this is where it's nice seeing what she's going to... Play your own game. Don't let the goddess of corn tell you what to do. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, it's the corn, I mean, it's wheat. <laughs> All right, so let's see. She is doing number two, so she's just bribing. Look, she's going to push me around, and I, I've i got to react. Plus, I really don't want to lose on a stream. If I lose when I'm playing in private, that's one thing. But when I'm losing publicly, that's, that's not cool. All right, so coin-wise, she has one, two, three, four. So she's laying out five bribes. Again, where is she getting all this money? Who knew corn and she's super serious about this? Can't get through one stream without someone making a pun, can I? That's a good one, though. I like that. Normally, I make jokes when I'm doing foundations, you know, like, I'm going to take B9, you suck my battleship and stuff like that. But man, she's super serious about this. That's, I kind of wish we'd done a trailer now for Gardens of Ceres and had done that in the trailer. All right, what am I doing? What was it I didn't want her to buy? G5, which I still don't want her to buy, and now she could actually get it. I'm going to take money. That's going to get me eight, and I'm going to hope that she doesn't get it, and then I can buy it. Wish me luck. All right, so she's going to do number one. That's cool. I mean, it's not cool, Ceres. 
but I'll take it anyway. She's going to enlarge. Obviously, she only has this one to enlarge. And that's fine because that's not that's a civic building that gets points for adjacent coin uh, commercial buildings. I didn't build any commercial buildings over there, so clearly she's bad at planning. She is going to get two points, however, for the unused build actions or enlarge actions rather. Now it's back to me and we're snagging G5 out from under her. And that's going to cost me three because she is a little briber. Bribing's bad, kids. Don't do it. Uh, so G5 blocking off her square. <laughs> Yay! I like that. I think it... I'm not sure, Hexy, if, if you're a Hexity, Hexity, Hexati. I'm not sure if you're poking fun here or not. No, no, I, I, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the, the support. I really do. All right, so I bought G5. Let's see what Ceres has to say. Ceres is going to do number one. She still wouldn't have bought the G. Clearly, she, her and I are playing a different game, clearly. Uh, I mean, we're not. But all right, so she's gonna buy a D first. So she's gonna buy D two. Do do do. She messed me up because I really wanted to put a foundry there. But you know, you know what they say. If I like, li if I like it, I should have put a lot marker on it. All right, so she messed me up. That's cool. I mean. She's got me circled in here. She's really messing with me. All right. So what am I going to do? She's pushing the envelope here. How are we on this? Is this correct still? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, oh, it hasn't changed. Uh, let's see. E7. It's okay. It would be better if I had still a civic building for it. E1. Nah. G3. Actually, no, I need to buy G3. That's not even a question. That's going to cost me five. Why didn't y'all tell me to buy G3? Boom. All right, back to... Si oh, well... Let's do this first and get ahead of ourselves. All right, back to Ceres. Ceres is going to do number one. Again with the bribing. She gets all these kicks in this particular one. I mean, obviously, depending on your shuffle, depends on how things are going to come out. And then as they, they do this weird thing and they resort themselves. Um, again, something Tertsy did in here that's really cool. She's going to bribe again. She's got one, two, three, four... So she's going to lay out five monies. So one, two, three, four, and five. You didn't fail me. Come on. Come on. Come on. I love all of you. I really do. I just want to say that again. Like, I really do. I love all our backers. You guys have, you folks have been amazing. Um, I was so nervous when I, when I found out the timelines had, had gotten where they are. And I feel like I've been in this room for 17 years, like most of you with COVID stuff. So I swear, sometimes even, even when y'all send me bad emails or messages, I'm just happy to be talking to people. <laughs> All right. So it's on to me. Um, I bought this. It's time, it's time, it's time to drop the monster, isn't it? Let's do this. We're dropping a foundry. Boom, boom, and boom. Whoopee. I always love dropping that in the last round. Actually, I, I love dropping that earlier because they rack more points, but hey, I'll take it. All right, back to Ceres. Ceres is going to do number one. Uh, let's see, a B. There is a B. She's going to buy B4, which I'm sure is something that's going to screw with me. Eh, no, nah, it's fine. I can live with it. All right, we're getting close to the end. 
Mm, what to do? What to do? I did not. I dropped this beautiful, beautiful building. It is gorgeous, but I need things. I'm going to take money. That's going to get me three, four, five, ten money. And I'm going to let Ceres go. She's going to do number one. Which means she's going to buy an E, which there's an E right there. She's going to buy E7. Because of course she is. I swear. The computers become sentient. Uh, let's see. I... Let's see, E1 is useful. C3 is actually useful, and so is C4. Uh, she would buy a C here. I'm gonna buy C3 so that hopefully she'll take C7 and I can have that. So I'm gonna spend four on C3. I've got a plan. Don't y'all even worry, I've got a plan. Uh, did I spend my money? I didn't. It's going to cost me four. All right. I bought C3. Let's see what Ceres does. She's going to do number three. She's overdue for an enlarging. She's got three. She obviously would do this one first. Which I am totally fine with because that only affects her. So that gets adjacent buildings but only my adjacent buildings. <sighs> Ceres is bad at planning this time. I can live with it. Uh, then she's going to do this one because it would make a bigger thing. That is actually great for her. She's going to get points for that one. And then finally, she's going to go here and get more money, which is great for her and because she gets double points in the last round. For money same same way i get my points for my money all right back to me this is tight um i'm gonna buy the c4 which i was worried she'd buy a c4 and that's why i left that but hey still works out for me buying c4 i really wish i could have unlocked the library though because the library right here would be amazing. So what'd that be? That'd be 14 points if I could have put this there. But obviously I can't because, you know, I screwed up. But I can still do this one, which will be two points here. So it'd be six points for that. Um, so, all right. So I bought my C4. We're going to see what Ceres does. Flip her over. She's going to do number two. She's going to buy an A. There is no A. She's going to buy a C. She's buying C7. I let her have that entire bottom row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I did. All right, back to me. So we are going to do what I said. I'm going to put in a beautiful fountain right here. Is that what I did? No, not a fountain. Why am I trying to put in a fountain? I want to put in a market. Because I'm... I don't like fountains. I mean, I love fountains. I'm not going to lie. I do. I do love fountains. All right, so I put in a, a fountain. Or market. I keep saying fountain. Find out what Ceres does. Ceres is going to do number two. She's going to buy the cheapest... This is four, this is four, she's buying E1. Which I'm okay with, because I wanted to buy D4. All right, of course I have no money, and if she buys it, I'm out of luck, but you know. I'm gonna take some money and hope that it's still there. So that's gonna get me again, uh, what I say? Five, six, uh, sorry, bleh. 10. Okay. And we'll see what Ceres does. She's going to do number four. The one thing I was actually hoping for her not to do. I don't get to buy D4 because she just bought it from under me. 
it's like she knew I wanted to build. I had such a, I had just good, I had such grand plans for that part of the world, that city. All right, so that's her there. I get one last turn, then she'll do an enlarge, and we'll move to final scoring. Uh, obviously, this money is completely and utterly useless. Cool. Uh, I could build here. I'm going to check her. No, I'll just check it. Actually, I should check it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. She really hasn't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess she hasn't. Um, which means she can't overtake me in population in the, in the, um, in the not, um, you know what I mean? The simpler game. She can't overtake me. So I could just, well, no, that's not going to work. Uh, market, it will pro this little market will probably be my best bet because then I could at least get some points. So I'm going to put a market right here. But not over obviously I can't build over hers. All right, mark it right there. It's at least two points. All right, and then she'll do her final enlarge, which will be this and this. Which she could, if she puts a coin here, she could help me out. She's gonna build this one first. That's gonna be more population. And let's hope for a coin. Come on, come on, come on, come on, coin. Ooh, it's a coin. Yes. Boom. Thank you, Ceres. I appreciate you making a poor choice at the end. All right. So now we're going to do final uh, final round scoring. So first we're going to do population again. Um, again, we know that she did one, so she's got that. My pop stayed the same. So I'm going to get 14 plus 10 for the final round bonus. So that's going to be 24, so that's going to move me up to 67. She's going to get my 14, so that's going to move her up to 55. Plus she, uh, sorry, she had one more point from her last enlarge action because she couldn't spend it. Um, so that's going to be population. Now we're going to do um, commercial scoring. Commercial scoring, I have five plus the coins that I would get convert, so that's going to be eight. And then that's going to be an additional two. So that's going to be 10 points for me. Ceres in the final round is going to get two points per coin. Uh, in this case, she has one, two, three, four, five, six. This obviously is a civic. It's going to get her 12 points. So that's going to move her to 68. And then we will score civic buildings. The civic building scores nothing for her. This civic building scores nothing for her. This one, nothing. This one, on the other hand, will get her two points. Uh, what else does she got? This one is for coins. That's going to get her nothing. This only scores for my building. So that's it for her on civic. Mm, time for my civic buildings. Ooh, man. I'm actually excited. I kind of, I, I, I think I crushed her. To be fair, I, I did play this a lot the last few days to, to prepare. Uh, all right, so for my civic buildings, let's see here. I got this blue marketplace, two victory points per adjacent coin. That's going to be three, four. Now, if this was the advance again, that. Uh, so that's going to be two per that. So that's going to be eight points for me. Boom, boom. If we look right here, blue fountain gets me one per adjacent. That's going to be one, two, three, four more points for me. Boom. And then here, the library is going to get me one, two, three more points. Oh, I'm so excited. I've never crushed her this hard before. You guys are excellent cheerleaders. Uh, this library here is going to get me adjacent pop. So that's going to be one, two two uh, four five six as adjacency so that's going to be six more points 97 and then i have this market that's going to get me one victory point per adjacent coin there are two adjacent coins that's going to get me to 99 oh my gosh i i i can't believe that i crushed her 
So for the record, so I've won against Ceres before. I've never beat her by more than three or four points at best. Uh, this was an overwhelming sweeping victory. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm not going to lie. All right, so that's going to be the Gardens of Ceres. Again, we did play on the the very basic mode. No monuments, no advanced scorings um, in terms of her tiles. So this is dead easy mode. And at this point, a number of times I've played it, I should beat her by this much. Um, but yeah, what really what really helped me in here is the fact that I stayed ahead of her in pop. I kept track of that, but I tried not to go too far ahead of her. Um, so managing that can become important. That is harder to manage when she's when she gets a lot of these double um, populations, and you're playing in a mode. Uh, so for those curious, as far as making the game harder. Uh, I happen to have the book here in just a paper. Um, so you've got normal, normal pop. You've got hard, where some of them count as two. And then you've got a challenge where she gets additional advantages. And there's a, a challenge mode sheet in here, which I will I will let you take a look at in the rule book. All right, so that's going to be Gardens of Ceres. Um, I'm going to flip back over here to my main scene. Just me my ugly mug. Um, I really appreciate everyone who came out. Again, once this is done um, on Twitch, I will download it. We'll get it up on the YouTube. We'll get it over to Kickstarter um, so we can see it. Again, we, I'm trying to, we're going to try to get uh, updates out a little quicker as we get more information because it's kind of where at this point the information is rolling. It's either rolling quick or rolling extremely uh, be far between. It's There's none of this normal updates. We're just waiting on the manufacturer to give us those last little bits of, yes, everything's fully assembled. Um, and waiting for someone to say, yes, you have the boats. You have the boats for sure. Um, you know, because there's been a lot of issues. So, you know, obviously as a publisher, we've we've um, shipped other things and, and uh, we've had so many boats canceled. It's been insane. So they, they, they are completely wrecked. And the funny thing is, it's, it's the fact that the containers are sitting here in the U.S. and they just haven't gotten back to China. Um, so here's hoping. I, I wanted this game in your hands yesterday. I'm really excited that you can now at least play series on there. So um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you to Hexati, my, my cheerleader over here. Fantastic. Um, I know you were very serious about um, cheerleading. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you half this win. All right, folks, um, I'm probably going to send a... Mm, am I? Yeah. Um, we actually have um, our friends Benita and Suzanne are playing Four Gardens, one of our other games. I'm going to send you all over there. So wave hi to them. Bye, folks. Do, 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 do. Go say hi to Benita and Panda. Or the oh, panda's here. Boom. Oh, I love pie. Boom. Let's raid. Do, 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 do. Okay. So that cool. I Arcane Wonders is raiding. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. Welcome, raiders. We are playing for gardens by our wonders what a coincidence of a ray what a winky dink. dink how are you hello robert um i conveyed to suze your message just fyi <laughs> that sounds very like, hello. <laughs> hello hello welcome readers my name is benita i'm a board game twitch streamer and we are currently playing for gardens i'm joined by the amazing suzanne you know who suzanne is she's amazing uh, oh, you, thank you. <laughs> you probably have bought Whoa. a roll and write because of Suzanne. <laughs> All right, and then I'm, I'm cleaning resources. Uh, I miss Suze, and I heard there was an epic pie discussion. You did miss an epic pie discussion. That we had a pie.